once again for joining us today. Today on Father First, I just wanted to look at a passage in Ephesians. I mean, just kind of walk through an explanation of what it is Paul's teaching and showing in this passage. And so in Ephesians, Paul kind of addresses this idea of division within the body of Christ. And there's this debate between the Gentiles and the Jews, and Paul's really just trying to address it and show them that there's a call to unity. And so as he deals with that, he walks into uh, chapter 4, verse 17, and he shows them where the only division in the body of Christ lies. And the way he does this is by showing that the only division is unbelievers and believers. And he says that it's your actions that show where you stand in that division. Whether, whether you're an unbeliever or believer, your actions, um, your decisions show where you fall. And so just starting in verse 17, I want to read real quickly. <clears throat> 17 says, Now this I say and testify in the Lord, that you must no longer walk as the Gentiles do in the futility of their minds. They are darkened in their understanding, alienated from God because of the ignorance that is in them, due to their hardness of heart. They have become callous and have given themselves up to sensuality, greedy to practice every kind of impurity. So he lays out very easily, very quickly, that when we choose to sin, if, if you are an unbeliever, you have no option but to choose to sin continually. You seek out that impurity, that greed, that you seek out that sin. And so he addresses this within this letter to say, listen, this is how the Gentiles, the unbelievers, are living. But if you're not living, if you've accepted Christ, you're not called to live like that anymore. And so he continues in verse 20, but that is not the way you learned Christ. Assuming that you have heard about him and were taught in him as the truth is in Jesus. To put off your old self, which belongs to your former manner of life, and is corrupt through deceitful desires. And to be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and to, be put, on the, and to put on the new self, created after the likeness of God, in true righteousness and holiness. And so he, he kind of flips this around. But once you've accepted Christ, you set off those old things. You put aside those, those sins, that, that pursuit of sin, and you become a new creation. You become the new self. And so I just wanted to address this and look at this closely because so often as believers in a church, we find ourselves kind of floating somewhere in the middle. Right? We have these sins that we still pursue, that we still struggle with. And we never fully set off the old self, right? That's the beauty of baptism, right? As, as Baptists, that's, that's kind of what we believe is that it's a symbolism of dying to your old self as you go under the waters. And when you are pulled back up, you have the new body, you have the new self, you have the Christ-influenced self, right? Your, your heart is no longer hardened towards God and you're no longer ignorant of the way God moves. But instead, you are very aware of what God is doing in your life and those around you. And in doing so, you're able to pursue Him better. And you set aside those pursuits of sin. You set aside those pursuits of wrong. And so I want us to see that what Paul really is walking through here is saying, your old self, your, your unbelieving self, your unsaved self, your unredeemed self, pursues sin continually. And at the moment of salvation, at the acceptance of Christ's message, of Christ's sacrifice, of God's calling uh, you back into the kingdom, back into the family, you set that old self aside, you set that old pursuit aside, and instead you pursue God. So I just want you to take a moment, maybe sometime this week, just get in a quiet space, take 5, 10, 15 minutes, and just kind of walk through what it is you're pursuing in your daily life. Is it sinful? Maybe it's something that is really good, but you've just let it take over your pursuit of God. And maybe it's something you've just put ahead of God without really realizing it. But just take some time and think about what it is you're pursuing, what it is you're so focused on that's taking your eyes off of God, and begin addressing that in your own life. That's what I've been doing since I started kind of going through this study, is just looking at how Things that I didn't even intend to take over my pursuit of God have just slowly crept in and taken over that pursuit. And so the challenge is just to make ourselves aware of those things and to address them and to move back into the new body, the new self, and pursue God fully. Thank you for joining us.